Welcome to the Titans of Industry show, and I have a returning guest who is an expert on market cycles and who has been talking about a rare event like this happening for, a, for quite a few years, and I want to get his take on what's going on right now in the markets according to his research and his cycles and um, his software, because what's happening, um, at least in March, was unprecedented in terms of the equity loss. Um, but I, I, I really want to get his take on it. Charles Nenner, charlesnenner.com. How are you, sir? Okay. Sitting at home in Amsterdam, locked in, but everything is fine. Well, um, you know, I'm sitting here in Tel Aviv, same, same thing. And I think pe people around the world are uh, really starting to adjust themselves to this new reality because uh, when it started in China, Uh, the amount of data and information that was out there um, made people think that this was a seasonal flu. And, you know, immediately after that, there was a 180 degree pivot after what happened in Italy. And now 3.4 billion people are, are locked down in their houses around the globe. So I, I really want to ask you, what does that mean economically? Well, It, it's not, um, let's go a little bit backwards what I've been writing for the last couple of years. I've been writing about the super cycle that, according to me, started after the uh, Berlin crash in the 1870s, maybe you remember. And they have tried to keep the economy going with all kinds of tricks uh, that we don't have time to go into now. Uh, so it would not break down. And I said, right now, we're coming to the end of the super cycle. That's the first thing. The second thing, I soon put it all together. The second thing is that, you know, there was a gentleman who wrote this famous book about the black swan uh, theory. And his theory was that there's always a black swan that we don't know about and anything can happen. Sure, Nassim so Taleb. What? Nassim Taleb, yes. So my first reaction was, is maybe you don't know, but maybe other people know. How can you say nobody knows? The third point I've been making for a long time is, even if there is a black swan situation, stop thinking what it is. You want to know when it is. It doesn't matter what it brings uh, down to. Uh, you want to know when it happens. So then I start publishing all my cycles, the end of the super cycle. I will go into that in a second. And the black swan theory. And we went, as you probably know, a couple of months before this happened, into zero stocks. No hatching, nothing, zero stocks. Now, the question is, does the market come down because of the virus or does it come down because of the economy? Actually, for investors, it's not important. We were in zero stocks at the highest day of, of the market. Now, that's very simple. If you follow my research, what you can do, I'll just for people who want to watch it, it's, it's for free for a while. You go to charlesnenner.com and you sign up and you see how it's being done. I also wrote that the GDP is so low, one and a half, two percent. So if you go into recession, we will go into depression because usually the GDP comes from six percent and then holds above one or two percent. I also wrote since interest rates are so low, we're going to be negative. There's not much that the Fed can do. So the question is, is it the virus? Is it not the virus? Fourth, another interesting observation that you might agree or not. When everybody was talking about the warming of the earth, I said very carefully, because they're going to kill you if you don't agree, that my cycle show it's at the top. Now, if this continues uh, and the economy uh, drops dead, then the warming will stop if it's true that human behavior has a lot to do with it. Well, then you can say, listen, that's because of the virus and economic downturn. And I say, it doesn't matter. Cycles showed that it's going to turn down. And the same as the black swan, we didn't know what's going to do it, but it happened. People have to learn how to understand that things happen and stop trying to understand why it happened. That 10, 20, 30 years, historians will tell us. Now they try to figure out what the virus is going to do. Well, if you want to know what the virus is going to do, and I assume we'll publish it, so I won't say too much about it, you have to look at the other virus outbreaks. First of all, is there a cycle? Did it happen every, every so many years? How long did it take? Did it go in phases? Nobody has a clue. They go from day to day. Talking about the economy, 
what is the economy going to do? If you're connected to the virus, you're never going to get it because you will not know exactly when the virus is going to stop doing what it's doing. So you have to look at history. You have to look at 1929, for instance, the big down drop in the uh, equity markets and what the economy did and compare it to this drop and then project what the economy is going to do and how long it's going to take. Nobody can change that. doesn't matter how much money they're going to put in the system. It's not going to change. So people have a business, better start reading about history or read our, our uh, updates so they know how long it's going to take. Now, the answer is, and I have it in my own family, what do we do? We close the businesses. Well, if you see you have to close the business in two, three years and everything is in bankruptcy, you might as well close it now. Uh, I know it's difficult, uh, but you have to be very careful. I tell them, don't put your personal money to keep the business going because the business might go and you might go and nothing is left. It's just that, as usual, the media become experts in, in virus theories, and I say this a bit as, as a joke, and nobody gives you an outlook for the economy. Now, to make the whole thing together, so we had the super cycle that started in the 1870s, and uh, I will write about it today. If you want to read it, uh, sign up. Again, it's going to be for free for a while. And it went in, in, in phases. And the other thing I showed was my theory about the sunspot intensity. Maybe you remember we talked about it. Uh, the sunspot intensity has to do with what happens here in, in, in the, on the Earth. I explained that it is uh, creating magnetic field, which influences the crystallization of water, which is in your brain. And I said, with the last time we saw a super low was in 2008-9. And now we're going to see even a super, super, super low uh, for the next couple of years. So there's not much you can do. Now, the question is, so what does it help cycle work? Well, after summer comes winter, after winter comes summer, and then the winter, and you can change it. But you might win buy a winter coat if you know the winter is coming. So you better get prepared and understand how cycles work and how the future is going to continue this economic downturn, which is going to be the worst in, in, in I mean, the worst since, since the 20s, maybe even, even, even worse, and start, uh, start thinking about your future. So do you think this will be like 1929? They definitely governments and, and uh, central banks have taken a different uh, policy compared to back then. Uh, we're not on the gold standard compared to back then. Budgets are different. Lots of things obviously are different in the world compared to uh, 90 years ago. Uh, do you think the result will be the same? A really um, a depression that will last a couple of years around the world, just in the U.S. Where, where, what, what's the specifics? Well, if you see that my high on the S&P was 33.89, and I said that's the high for this year. The high was exactly 33.89 on the exact day of the top. And I think it's time for people to look at facts. If these facts are 1,000% correct, then you assume that the cycle work works. And if it would be like that, that uh, uh, governments can change cycles, then I would close the business and it wouldn't work anymore. I've been dealing this before I went to Goldman Sachs, after I went to Goldman Sachs. What if it doesn't work anymore? I said for 40, 50 years it's working. Let's assume it continues to work. Like when I throw an apple in the air, how do we know it continues to fall down? Well, let's for now assume it falls down. So the assumption is there's nothing you can do to change the outcome. If you can do something to change the outcome, then you cannot predict because you don't know what's going to happen. So leave that aside. Go with the idea. It's not time to, ch to challenge a child to cycle that have been working so perfectly. We're in 0% stocks, and we know exactly when to go into 100% stocks again. And if it depends on, on what the governments do, then I have no idea. So let's just assume that things go the way they go and, uh, and the, uh, the amount of, of losses in the stock market uh, predicts the amount of losses in the economy like it always does and not try to say, well, maybe tomorrow they find something else and they're going to do something and it's going to end up different. Charles, uh, when you talk about the immediate future, what do you think will happen in terms of society, not the economy? Do you, do you believe that there will be um, social rioting do you, uh, on a massive scale? Do you, do you think that there will be some disorder or um, will governments, even in the West, be able to um, 
alleviate some of the concerns that the public has? Because obviously, until we have some repurposed drugs and other cures that will be able to uh, flatten the curve and allow people to uh, go out to society, we are going to be on a quarantine. How does this unfold? How do we start relaxing these measures? Well, I don't know how long you've been following me. You know, I do war cycles. I prove that every so, so many years, the long and short of cycles predict when the wars, and I said there's going to be a lot of social unrest, which already saw in the, in the United States. When I'm in the United States, uh, one party likes Trump, one party doesn't like Trump, and they're so fanatic against each other. Of course, there's going to be a lot of social unrest because this thing that I know more about Holland than the United States right now, that they give a check or you can postpone your payments for one month is not going to help. And people don't know how long it's going to take. So it's going to be a very, very bad situation. Now, even if they figure out what to do with the virus, there's so much damage done on, uh, on uh, the economy. It takes years and years and years until something good is going to come out of it. As an example, after the 30s, people were afraid to go keep money in the banks. They were afraid to, uh, to expand the businesses. They set on the money. They didn't know what would happen. The same happens over here. So forget about the virus. Think about the economy. The virus is one uh, reason why the economy is bad. The economy is bad because there was a super cycle that ended. Somebody had to end it. Something had to end it. In this case, it was the virus. It could have been a war. It could have been, I don't know what it could have been. It doesn't matter. Think about the economy. Learn from the economy. Compare it to what happened in different uh, crashes in the stock market and how it influenced the economy. And don't believe that the Fed is like a Freudian figure that's going to save us because nobody's going to save us. Okay, so in March, we had uh, put in lows. Then we had a rally. Are we going to test these lows again? Are we going to go below them? And is this planned for April? I, I thought March, to me, was uh, the month of speculations. All of these investors around the world were trying to gouge how problematic this virus uh, will be and obviously um, it was discounting the future. April is a month of realities. We're starting to see data come out. 10 million Americans are unemployed. We probably will see um, more of that coming in. But we also saw a big relief, a response from governments and central banks. Is, is this already discounted in the markets or are we going to see much lower uh, prices for stocks around the world and in the U.S.? I, I wrote an, an email to uh, CNBC in London because I was there a year ago and he asked me, he says, the Dow goes to 5,000 and I was almost left out of the uh, studio. I said, maybe you should apologize. We come down from 30,000 to 18,000. Maybe now you see 5,000 is the probability. Uh, it's just beyond this, the understanding that you have over there and it's beyond the understanding people have. There's pure mathematics. The market comes down with a certain uh, momentum and from the momentum, you can see how low it goes. If I throw a ball down, it bounces back. That's very normal. If I throw a market down, it bounces back. If you know mathematics of markets, you know how high the bounce will go, how, how many weeks it will take, and if it goes down, what the next low is. It's pure mathematics. Now, if you don't believe in that, I don't know how people invest, but I leave it up to them. We at Charles Nanda Research Center, we tell you even during the day, we have intraday services, if a market goes up, until which time it goes up, I really mean it's going to be 2.15 or it's going to be five minutes past three and how high it will go. And, uh, and it works perfectly because it's all mathematics. It's nothing to do with the news. It has nothing to do with the outcome. If there's a bounce, it's interpretation of people who think, oh, it's not going to be so bad. That's mass psychology that can perfectly be predicted. Understood. I want to ask you, you know, there's a lot of um, research out there about uh, what will happen in the future. How does it, as it relates to the past and past cycles, that's a lot about uh, what Nassim Taleb wrote in Black Swan Events. Is it an issue to predict the future according to the past um, if there are things that are um, unforeseen by the past, in other words, that have never happened before? There's nothing that never happened before. Like King Solomon says, there's no, nothing new under the sun. I just talked about it with my, with my son. Everything, but you have to look down thousands of years. 
and then then you find it. Uh, but what was the question before? I just forgot. Um, I was asking how um, how is it possible to predict the near and long term future as it pertains to the past um, because we always live in new circumstances. For example, um, in 1929 if we look at that crash or in 2000, if we look at that crash or 2008, um, the world was different. Uh, for example, if you compare this virus to the SARS, when SARS happened, China was yeah, 8%. But you saw, I, I, really, I really don't want to talk. I will give you an example. I can show you in 87, I had the exact day of the top. In 98, I published the exact day of the top. In 2007, go to my website, CNBC. In 2006, I predicted the exact day of the top in 2007, and the Dow was 10,000, and I said the Dow goes to 4,300. That was exactly the high. Now, I predicted the exact day of the top and exact level of the top. My question is, how many times do I have to do that? I do it already for 50 years in order to say, well, maybe it works. People can continue to say, I want to see it another 10 years, 20 years, but they're all dead. Why not take advantage of something that has been proven, that I explain how I do it, it's not a black box, that is right 100% of the time, and let's stop talking about the virus. Now, I just want to answer now the question that I remember about how it's going to bounce back the economy. I learned from where I work, I'm not going to say who, who, who does it, because I don't want to get in trouble. If you are negative on a market or an economy, you're not allowed to publish it because brokerage firms don't want to bring it out. But you're allowed to publish it if you say, but in six months, everything's going to be okay. So that's where you see that people say, you know, the GDP is going to drop back, et cetera, but going to bounce back in six, seven months. Only for political reasons, because otherwise it's too negative and they're not going to give an opinion. They have no clue. They didn't see this coming. They don't know when the bounce is coming. They don't know how low the market is going. They don't know when it's going to bottom. They have no clue. Don't be fooled. It's only for political reasons that they say, well, it's very bad now, but there's hope. You, as you hear my voice, it very much annoys me because the small investors lose money because all of all these crooked things. What should the small investors uh, do right now? Should they be in cash or should they start looking at opportunities? Should they, should they short some of the industries? I don't, listen, when I said go to zero stocks, it is because I said the same thing in 2007. Please go to my website on CBC. I said, this is too crazy. You cannot short it. I do the intraday updates. The market is down 2,000 points. I come back from the bathroom. It's up 1,500 points. How are you going to short that? Even, even the, 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 the experts don't know how to short that. You can't play this market, it's not possible. You can play it if you watch our intraday updates, then you can play it and make a fortune, uh, but you need a lot of, of knowledge to understand the intraday updates. So, so it's always like, like if I say go to 0% cash and all the media say buy, 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 it's very hard for me even to get my clients, that are clients for many years to get them out. And after they lose 30%, they say, so what should I do now? Well, now it's a bit late. Now I don't have an opinion because if I say sell and it goes up another 10%, the people are upset. The only thing I can say is we have 0%. You want to know when to buy in the future, follow our research. If you want to take a loss, maybe don't have a loss and get out of the market at this level. It's your choice. Charles, what would have happened had the Fed and the U.S. government not intervened, not bailed out? What would have been the result of that? Exactly the same result, because we predicted the days and the levels. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, look at the research. We said where the bottom was on the S&P after it crashed down from almost 3,400. I think our target was 2,250. We missed it by six points. Now, if you want to say it has something to do with the news, okay, then people will never understand how markets function. If you say it has nothing to do with the news, it's pure mathematics, then you open a book, there are a lot of books around and you watch our research and then you learn how to predict how low and how high a market will go, how many days it takes and how it develops. 
Charles, where can people check out your research? Well, you can go, I think, to Charles Nenda Research Center, or you can go to charlesnenda.com. You can get a trial. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, we publish four times a day, uh, sorry, sorry, four times a week and intraday. Um, just write down on a piece of paper what we say is going to happen, and two days later, look if it happened. And then, of course, there's going to be a reason for it that you will read in the media. And then you have to make up your mind. Does it have anything to do with it or not? I'll give you one last example. Our cycle low in crude was around $20, and the low was on Thursday. So we told people to buy when it gets above twenty-one twenty. I think it closed at 27 Now, there are a lot of reasons for that. It doesn't matter. We said three weeks ago that last Thursday, what is that, three days ago, two days ago, was the cycle low, and we gave them the number of the cycle low. Now, it's for everybody to, to, to figure out if it has anything to do with Russia, with Saudi Arabia, whatever. And if it has to do, let's say it has to do, then it's still interesting that we know at what day they come out with a certain statement because that's a cycle low and that's what has to function. So the idea is what are the chances that we say three, three four weeks ago that crude will go. By the way, at 68, we went short. And our downside target is now $4.90. They're down $4.90. I wrote it down in words because other people think I made the typo. But I said from $20, the cycle is bottoming. Now we can go to $33. Now after the low, the market is up like 30%. Is there any other way of explaining it than saying, oh, the cycles work and the level works? It's all mathematics. I just repeat that. Try not to figure out why. Try to figure out what and you make a big profit. Stop thinking why things might happen. You will never figure out. Charles Nenner, very interesting stuff. Thank you very much for taking the time, and I know you have a busy day ahead of you. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Be well.